It's been a long time, okay? I gotta admit, I'm kinda missing years ago. We gotta get back on the grind. Hello everybody, I'm Carr, and today we are finally gonna do another gold walkthrough. Oh my god, this channel only has two gold walkthroughs? This is crazy stuff. This is exclusive content, okay? Specifically, we are gonna be doing the Youth Go 2020 US Open Contest Gold Problem 1 haircut, which I really badly need right now, but not gonna happen. Dang, they really made the problem very relevant. Dude, like some of the bronze problems are called like social distancing things. Yusuke is really on their problem naming game, not gonna lie. But before we get into the walkthrough, please make sure to like the video and subscribe if you guys want more because I basically decide what videos to make based on which videos you guys like. So if you guys like these kind of videos, you guys want me to do more Yusuke walkthroughs, please let me know. But hey, I like making Yusuke walkthroughs too, so it's a win-win situation, am I right? So anyways, let's jump right into it. Tired of a stubborn cowlick, Farmer John decides to get a haircut. He has N strands of hair arranged in a line and strand I is initially AI micrometers long. Micrometers? Ideally, he wants his hair to be monotonically increasing in length, so he defines the badness of his hair as a number of inversion pairs AI, comma J, such that AI, okay, yeah, that's just the definition of inversion, very cool stuff. For each, J is equal to 0, 1, all the way to N minus 1. Farmer John would like to know the badness of his hair. All strands with length greater than J are decreased to length exactly J. Fun fact, the average human head does indeed have about 10 to the 5 hair. Very fun fact. So the first line contains N, the second line contains A1 through AN, and for each J0 through N-1, output the badness of Farmer John's hair in a new line. Okay. And the sample input says he has 5 strands of hair. Dang, Farmer John, you are stacked. You got so much hair. What the heck? So he got one that's 5, he got one that's 2, he got some that's 3. What the heck? How do you have a 0 micrometer lens hair? What the bruh? And basically, the idea is that we cut it to different lengths. So if we cut them all to length 0, then there's no inversions because they're all the same length, right? If we cut them all to 1, all these hairs are bigger than this hair. So there's an inversion right here, right? The smaller one is after the bigger one, so that's one inversion. There's another inversion because this guy's bigger than that guy. Another one, and another one! So we got four inversions, okay, that makes sense. And then we go to 2, right? So these guys are still all the same length, and the same logic applies. So we're again at 4, oh my god! Sample output 4. Okay, and then once we go up another one, right, there is an inversion right here because there's a 3 length hair before a 2 length hair. So there's an extra inversion right here, but nothing else changes. So we add 1, so now we're at 5 inversions. And then if we move up another one, then this 5, or this 4, I guess now, is in front of these two guys. So we add 1 inversion for this guy being ahead of this guy, and then another inversion for this guy being ahead of this guy. So now we get to 7. Okay. So that's basically how the input and output works, but how the heck do we solve this heckin' problem? So why don't we actually just start everything at zero, right? So like these four, five dots. Okay, so at zero, 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 everything's exactly the same length, right? But then when we move to one, this guy is not gonna grow, right? Because his max length is zero, right? Basically, we can only cut hair down. We can't make it grow greater than it already is. So this guy is max length at zero, but the rest of them can go up to one length. So now everybody's at one length, and we can see that now we have to add four inversions in because these four ones are greater than this shorty boy over here. And then when we go to two, all of them are still growing, right? Because all of them have a max height of greater than two. So all of them grow again. And there are no new inversions, right? Because all the guys who are growing just stayed the same relative to each other, right? However, when we go to three, like this guy stops growing, right? Because like he's only went two. So now these guys grow again. And now we can count how many new inversions came up, right? And we saw that there was only one new inversion. And then we go up another one, but these guys stopped growing. And now we got two more inversions, and hooray, we get to seven eventually. So let's see, what actually contributed to these new inversions, right? So basically the only contributor to inversion that we found is when something on the left grows and something on the right of it stops growing, right? Because like, let's go back to two. This guy stopped growing, but this guy kept growing. So this caused an inversion because the thing on the right stopped growing before the thing on the left. So now we just gotta find the number of times this happens, and then we're good. So why don't we just start from the very bottom, right? And we always know that there's gonna be zero inversions when you cut everything to zero, right? Because everything the same length is for sure gonna be zero inversion. Now let's keep track of which hair stop stopped growing, right? So we know that this guy stopped growing. Hooray. Okay. But that means that everybody to the left of him who's still growing is gonna create a new inversion the next time, right? Because now these guys are gonna keep growing. So basically, we could count the number before it, right, that are still growing. That's 4, 4 is still growing, so we add plus 4, and then we move on. Okay, so now that we consider this guy, he's basically done. We don't have to care about him at all. Okay, so now everybody's still growing, we don't change anything, right? Because we only change something when someone stops growing. And then we had to check who's still growing on the left of it. 
So nothing changed since here, so plus zero. Very cool stuff. These guys still grow. Okay. Now this guy stops growing. So we look, how many guys on the left of him are still growing? That's right, there's only one guy who's still growing. So we add one, plus one. The reason why we do this, right, is because we know this guy stopped growing, but this guy's gonna keep growing, so the next time, this guy's gonna get taller than this guy, and then hooray, we know that this is gonna be an inversion. So that's how we know to add one. Okay, now we're done with this guy. He stopped growing, we don't have to worry about him anymore. Okay, now these two guys stop growing. So this guy has one guy still growing on the left of him, so that's plus one. But then this guy also has one guy to the left of him who's still growing. This guy stopped growing, so he doesn't contribute to an inversion, but this guy's still going. So we add one for this guy and one for this guy, and we get plus two. So now the answer, you can see that this is not the answer, right? Like this is clearly not what we want, but we know that this is just like how much we had to add each time. So we need to go to zero, then we had to add four, okay. Add zero to four, we get four. Then we add one, we get five. And we add two, we get seven. Holy moly, whack moly, we got an algorithm. So basically the key concept here is like, instead of actually solving for the answer, you can solve for the difference between the answers. So you can find how much you had to add each time. And this concept is basically called prefix sums. And knowing the term prefix sums is pretty useless, but like being able to apply it in problems is really important. Just knowing that like solving for the actual thing is not that important. As long as you solve for the difference between the two, you can easily find the actual answer. All right, why don't we just code it up together because the actual solution is pretty cool and it's not that straightforward, okay? Because you had to do a little bit of sorting, some like deletions and vectors and all that cool stuff. So why don't we do it? Haircut coming up. Very good stuff. All right, let's include our F string. Dude, I haven't done this in so long. It's so weird. What the heck? All right, we got to define our int n and then we got an array int a 100,000. Okay, finally, after hours of hard work, we finally got our reading and stuff. Okay, so we first got to keep track of the things that are still growing, right? And then we got to count how many are still growing that are left to the one we stopped. But then that also means we had to know which ones to stop. So, to find out which ones to stop, we want to stop the smallest ones first, right? So we got to sort the array while keeping their indices. So that basically tells us we need two vectors, right? One to store which order we want to like stop them from growing in, and another one to keep track of like which ones are left. So I'll do vector in left, and then we'll also need a vector of parent because we need to associate each number with which index it is at. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to push back to left i because originally all of them are still growing, so that's good. Oh, is there a, like a left function in C++? Why don't we just do L? And then we also want to push back the hair with its index. So hairs.pushback, the length of the hair, which is ai, and its index. Okay. Okay. So now what we got to do is we got to sort our hair. All right, so to sort it, we just do sort. Oh, we should probably include algorithm. So we sort hairs.begin, hairs.end, epic. So essentially our answer starts at zero, right? So we first do int tote equals zero. I don't know why I call it tote. It does, doesn't make any sense, but it's okay. And then we basically have to loop through all of our hairs in here. So for pair int int hair in hairs. Then basically what we want to do is we want to see what index it is in the left hairs, right? And see how many other ones are before. And that's just the index, right? Like, okay, let's go back to the example. So let's say we're at the two stage moving to the three stage, right? So this guy is going to stop. So if we found its index in the array, which would be one, there's exactly one that is left growing in the left array. So we are good. Also, what's nice about our algorithm is that what we'll do is if there's two that are equal size, right? Let's say we're at like three and we're going to five. Then we basically have that there's three of these guys and these two guys are going to stop growing and this is the only guy who's going to keep growing. So we know that we want to have one for this guy, one for this guy. But if we looked at this guy first, then his index would be two and we would count two for that guy and that's not good. However, when we sort a list of pairs, basically it sorts for based on the first one first and then the second one. So we'll count this guy first, so it'll be one. So there's one guy, perfect. And then we delete him and then we look at this guy whose index is now one, right? And hurry, we got one plus one equals two, does what we want. So let's go back to the code and do that. So essentially to get its index, what we want to do is, or what we want to do is to end is equal to lower bound, l dot begin, l dot end, and then we want the index of the hair, which is the second in the pair. And then to convert that to an integer, we just subtract l dot begin. Okay, so all we got to do is we do top plus equal to end, and then we got to erase this current hair from our list, right? Because once it stops growing, we're done with it, we don't care about it anymore. So all we gotta do to do that, if we do l dot erase, and then all we gotta do is pass in the iterator, which is hair.begin plus int. 
uh, hairs, whoops. Oh, whoops, I'll drop again, I'm trolling. Okay. And then after each time we add, well, we want to see out at the beginning. So why don't we test it out? Okay, save that. And let's try running it. Oh, 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 wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, 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 I see. So J goes from zero to N minus one. It's not based on the actual hair length. So what we got to do is we got to go from zero to N minus one. And it only stops growing when J is equal to the hair. So now we need another variable to keep track of which hair we're on. And we know that the hairs are ordered in increasing length. So basically what we got to do is we got to keep a counter of the current hair that we're on, right? Because let's say that there's two hairs at a certain length, right? Then we want to look at both of them and increment the counter for each time, but it's still the same J. So we need a separate variable. So now we'll basically just go through all of the hairs that are the same length. So while uh, hairs counter dot second is equal equal to J, no, no, sorry, first is the actual length of the hair. Then what we got to do is do the same thing that we were doing before, except our hair is just going to be equal to hairs count. Hair in, in hair. Okay, there we go. Very epic stuff. Let us test it out. Whoops, probably should F out first, and we are Gucci. Please work. I haven't seen green in Yuzuko in so long. Yes, let's go. Very epic stuff. Wait, what? No, what? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it said we had to use 64-bit integers. That's why you read the problem, boys. <laughs> Oops. And that is also why you always use long longs. Whenever in doubt, use long longs. I mean, that's not a necessary long long, but it should be fine. Okay. Are right, you ready for this epic greenness? It's gonna be so green, you're not. it's not even gonna be funny, okay? Oh. Look how green it is. That's just beautiful. You gotta admit. So green. We did it. Let's go. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a while since I did a Yusuko walkthrough. I haven't actually done Yusuko in a while either. So I hope it was enjoyable to you guys. So basically the two skills that we used in this video were first prefix sums. The idea that you don't actually have to calculate the values, but rather the difference between the actual values. And then we used the idea that you could use sorting to speed up your algorithms. Very cool stuff. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know if you guys want more of these Yusuko crash course walk walkthroughs. I haven't done this in so long. But anyways, thank you guys for watching again. See you guys next time.